Hello and welcome to the Fits and Healthy Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Fitz, and today's episode is all about sleep. So stay tuned because you're going to take away a lot of nuggets that will help you be more fits and healthy. Don't forget, you can find Dr. Lauren on Instagram at Club Fits Fitness with a Z, on Facebook at Facebook forward slash Dr. Lauren Fitz or Facebook forward slash Club Fits Fitness. You can find me, Synthony, on Instagram at Synthony, that's C-I-N-T-H-A-N-I-E, or on Facebook at Facebook forward slash The Girl Boss Daily. Hello and welcome to the Fits and Healthy Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald, also known as Dr. Lauren Fitz. And today I'm joined by my gorgeous, especially gorgeous, co-host, Cynthia McAllister. What's up, girl? Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> I mean, for real, like you are glowing this morning. I mean, you're always gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. But today, <laughs> Stop with, it. <laughs> with the hair, the makeup, and the Pocahontas shirt, like, mm-hmm. Tanner best be watching because I mean, he's, he's going to have to fight off some, some men. I'm just saying. Oh my goodness. I think it's just because I had a really good workout this morning. So I'm just in a good mood. It just, you know, you just yes. carry yourself different when Amen. you just have like a kick-ass workout. So yep. Morning workouts are it. the best for yes. sure. For yes. sure. So today's episode, we're talking about sleep, but before we get started, we have to do iTunes review of the week because this thing is like it's super important because people take time to go subscribe to the the podcast and actually leave words of their feedback. And, you know, we like to hear both good and bad, but we love the good and we love the five star (laughs) review. So who's, who's our review of the week from this week? I think I love the reviews the most because it's how you listeners can interact with us and share your journey along with us as we are on this podcasting journey. And so that's why I like, I love, I get giddy to read these reviews. So this one is probably my favorite review. So Ooh, far, just saying. It's geez. a really good one. Okay. So it says good things happen to good people. It's a five-star review from Katie Harper. And she says, I am a good person. And this podcast is a good thing that has happened to me. Oh, right there chills. already. Right yeah, in the no, field. chills already. <laughs> <laughs> she said, ladies, I have been listening since the beginning and just spent the last few days binging to catch up and even re-listen to a few of my favorite episodes. Y'all seriously give me all the feels. I have definitely laughed, learned, and even cried while listening. Your love of learning is contagious. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing all your knowledge, aka power. I feel like I have two besties who have my back and want the best for me. Keep it. <sighs> Ah, Katie so I, know, Harper. I know you always say you get chills, but I got chills that time too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my chills aren't going away actually. Like it's yeah, all over. That's, yeah. Oh, thank you, Katie, so much. Like seriously. Um, you are a good person, Katie. You absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and you know, it, this, th- that's the whole reason that we do this is, yes. is to have that, that life changing experience in, in our mm-hmm. listeners. So, um, thank you to everyone who takes the time to do that. Cause truly the more people that take the time to leave a review, the easier it is for people that have no clue who you and I are to mm-hmm. find us and search for us. So, yeah. So- and like I said, that's our way that we get to connect with you guys and see what kind of process you're going through as well with this podcast. So Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. So today's episode, um, <laughs> we were talking about it before it's, <laughs> it's, it's about sleep and, um, one thing that uh, for people that have been following me at least for the longest time, um, they know that I keep it 1000. Like I keep it real. I don't sugarcoat things. Um, I, you don't even keep it 100. You keep it 1000. I I keep it (laughs) 1000. Okay. (laughs) Like for real, for real. (laughs) Um, and, and so today's episode, I think ironically, I'm just going to be honest with the audience. We're talking about sleep and I have talked about sleep on, on my live Facebook broadcast on different, you know, platforms. And recently I have not been, um, prioritizing my sleep as much as I have been in the past. (laughs) Well, (laughs) so, so, but it's still, it's still a good, um, you know what? I think maybe that's the reason why we needed to do this episode today to remind me that, um, it, it, no matter what is going on in my personal life, mm-hmm. good or bad, that yeah. um, sleep still needs to be a priority. So, yes. Okay. So, first things first, um, I definitely need to give a shout out because um, 
most people that have listened to this um, podcast have listened to the episode where we interviewed Sean Stevenson from the Model mm-hmm. Health Show. If you haven't grabbed his book, Sleep Smarter, that is a great place to get more in-depth information. Um, a lot, yep. It, have you have you read it yet? I haven't read it yet. Okay, you bought so, it, but you haven't read it yet. Yes, yeah. Okay. I own it, but I haven't read it yet. So, <laughs> oh, good lord. My okay, so that's okay. That you know, this is this is going to be a um, kind of like a cliff notes version. Um, yeah, there's going to be a little bit more than just what you can get from Sleep Smarter. But for people that want more, that is a definite, and it's uh, available on Audible. Um, you know, audiobooks are for people that don't know us. That's the way that we like to learn and listen. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So this um, today for people that are watching via podcast or, or via our um, our YouTube channel, I have my drink some coffee, put on some gangster rap and own it shirt. And I have already <laughs> finished my huge thing of bulletproof coffee. This That morning. was all coffee. Oh my God. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe because, um, I needed a little bit extra coffee this morning. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, for, for listeners, I, um, a man met me that has caught my attention. And, um, and a lot of people know that I have been, um, hashtag single and dating now for about maybe five or six months. Um, Mm -hmm. I I went through divorce and was definitely just working on myself, definitely not interested in dating and, um, kind of started being open to that idea. And I've, I've met a lot of, you know, great men along the way and, and had, you know, but I, a particular man met me about a month ago and, and he's so far, he's occupying some of my time and I, and I kind of like him. <laughs> so it doesn't suck. <laughs> no, it doesn't suck. It doesn't it's suck. A good so, way to start 2018. It is, but you know, it's crazy because, um, when other people get thrown in the mix, it's, you know, there are certain habits that sometimes go by the wayside mm-hmm. and my habit of going to bed between nine and nine 30 has not happened. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get date night in. Gotta yeah. get date night in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, when you're working with somebody else's schedule too, like you said, you have to move a little here, move a little there, make it work. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so while we are recording this episode about sleep, I am admitting to my audience <laughs> that I I am far from perfect. And I, I definitely, I'm going to re-listen to this episode and take, start taking my advice again. (laughs) So, okay. So first things first, um, sleep, sleep is something that is an element that people underestimate the power of, Mm -hmm. um, for myself, I grew up in, for my twenties, at least being in college, med school and residency. That was pretty much 12 years of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, the mentality of, we can sleep when we die is definitely prevalent in medicine, especially in the operating room. Um, my, uh, my ex-husband was a surgeon. And I mean, if I had a dollar for every time I heard him say, I can sleep when I die, you know, I, I I would have a lot more dollars (laughs) because I feel like that's like glorified though. It is, Especially because like, it's like the hustle era right now. Like everybody's supposed to be hustling and like, you have your hustle that you do. And it's like glorified to be like, I'll work forever. I'm not, I'll, I'll sleep when I die. Like that's totally glorified. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, it, it's, you're almost, um, not look down upon, but when, when, when I tell people my normal sleep schedule, they think that I'm crazy. Like Mm. the, like I, what's your normal sleep schedule? My, when, when a particular someone is not in my life, I usually, (laughs) I usually am in bed between nine and nine 30 and asleep by between nine 30 and 10. I usually wake up on my own, um, around five, usually before, before on uh, like 4 45 ish. And that's mm. what time my body clock wakes up. And I stopped once I, I left um, practicing anesthesia, I stopped living by an alarm and it took me a long time to get mm-hmm. my sleep back on check because, mm-hmm. um, and we're going to talk about shift workers today. And we're going to talk about people that, that don't have as much control over their sleep schedule as well. But, yeah. um, but, you know, being an anesthesiologist for so long, I, I was on call, you know, every third or fourth night and, and more times than not, you're called in and, and that disrupts everything. So, so let, let me ask you before we get into the nitty gritty of sleep, what's your sleep schedule? I pretty much go to bed by like 
10, 10 30, okay. 11 at the latest. Yeah. But usually 10 or 10 30 is when I'm in bed and about to be asleep. And then I typically wake up. Sometimes I'll wake up at five with my husband. If not, then I wake up at seven. Okay. Have, have you always been that way or has that just nope. been, okay. Well, what was <laughs> when, your normal before? When I was working full time, when I was working a nine to five, I would go to bed at like almost 11, 1130. And I would wake up at six and I would wake up so angry every single day. <laughs> <laughs> like I legitimately woke up so angry. And I know that it's because like, not only was I not getting enough sleep, but I wasn't getting quality sleep mm. because I had this like scarcity mindset about sleep. Cause I was like, well, it's already 11. I'm not going to get good night's sleep anyway. Like I decided that for myself when I would go to bed. And so I never got, never got good sleep. So very true. And, and that, that, uh, <laughs> that brings up some great points that we're going to make throughout this talk. Um, so, okay. So let's, let's talk about getting back to nature. First things first. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> whether you believe in God or not, we were designed a certain way and mm -hmm. the whole sun coming up and the sun going down. Um, we were meant to be awake while the sun is out and we were meant to be asleep when the sun is down. And, mm -hmm. um, and that right there, you know, everything that, that we talk about is really getting back to, you know, our roots, nature and, and the way we were intended to live. And, um, and so for the people that are, that are not shift workers. Um, the, the first thing that you need to, to look at is, okay, um, where is my priority? Cause usually priority for sleep is very low on the totem pole. So, you know, a lot of our listeners are, are moms that have, you know, more than one kid that, and you know, they're taking care of their kids, their husband, their, their, oftentimes they have their own job. So they've got mm -hmm. all of these things. And so it's very easy to get overwhelmed and let sleep become the last thing on their priority list. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, so if you have a, a non shift working job, I want you to sit down and write down on average for a seven day week, what time that you get in bed, what time you fall asleep and what time you wake up. Okay. Now, when you look at those numbers for just a seven day period, if they are off and they're not the same, and I'm not talking about like literally it's because so many people on the weekends, they're like, Oh, I'll just, I'll just catch up on the sleep that I missed out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, our bodies function better when we go to bed around the same time every night and the same time uh, wake up in the same time every morning. Mm -hmm. Right. So just writing down the reality of what your sleep is, is the first step to recognizing, okay, I got some work to do. Right. Yeah. Um, and the, the second step that I want people to do is, um, write down how many times they wake up in the middle of the night. So are you someone that wakes up in the middle of the night? I used to, I used to a lot. I okay. actually, I actually used to sleepwalk and sleep talk a lot. No way. <laughs> yes. It scared Tanner so bad. I failed to mention it before we started living together. Oh, shh. Isa. Awesome. <laughs> and I yelled at him in my sleep one night and he was like so upset the next morning. And I'm like, why are you so grumpy this morning? He's like, you don't remember yelling at me? I was like, honey, I sleep talk. I don't remember. I don't know what oh. I said to you. I don't know what I did. I'm sorry. It wasn't personal. <laughs> but I, I used to do it a lot and I haven't in a long time now. Right. Huh. That's mm -hmm. interesting. So you've mm -hmm. got grown out of it or Tanner's just become numb to it? <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. Right. Do you, <laughs> he just knows now to just be like, go back to sleep. And I will. Right, like, right. I'll just stop talking and I'll go back to sleep. So sleepwalking, how, like, do you wake yourself up when you sleepwalk? No. Like, okay. That's so scary. for example, <laughs> I know. Mm. That's why I terrified Tanner. I used to sleepwalk all the time as a kid and it would scare my parents all the time. Like yeah. I remember one time when I was a little kid, I woke up and I woke up in the shower because the water hit me. I had gotten like up in no. my sleep. Yes. Gone into the bathroom. I was fully clothed, still in my pajamas. And I had turned the shower on and I woke up when the water hit my face. And I was like, what the heck am I doing? Like what's going on? That's crazy. So, when Tanner and I first, so we lived in sin before we got married uh -huh. we, when we first Judge moved in zone. Judge zone, that's all <laughs> I'm saying we, we first moved in together um I was maybe the second or third night that we had been living together and we had moved across the country together when we first moved into each other right. or into an apartment with each other and he is just a night owl and I didn't know this because we had never lived together so he's a night owl 
and I had fallen asleep and he had gotten up out of bed and was in the living room, like either watching TV or playing video games or something. And I woke up, I say that in quotes, like I woke up as in I started to sleepwalk and sleep talk and I like walked out into the living room and he said my eyes were open and everything. And that I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm playing a video game. And I'm like, I didn't move across the country to be here by myself. And he was like, okay. And like came, in, <laughs> came into the bedroom and like went to bed and was like, what the heck? Like it freaked him out. And he was like, what crazy, per- like, why is she so mad? And I woke up, that was, I just woke up the next day and was like, morning. And he was like, you're crazy. Like, no way. You don't remember yes, it at all. I don't remember it at all all oh, wow. not at all so wow. it's not nearly as bad as it used to be but I used to do some weird stuff that's me. awesome yeah what it's is it, way better now what is it about like when when you're sharing a bed with someone that that talks in their sleep like it for me it freaks me out and I, maybe I've watched too many yes. horror flicks you know but <laughs> yes. but like like my best friend Allison Kerbo uh, Laird who uh, she was on one of the episodes that uh, mm-hmm. where I interviewed her about t- talking about friendship um when she was out here we because I had multiple like many people staying at my place so she and I shared my bed and yeah. literally in the middle of the night she woke up and she like had this whole conversation with me and it, <laughs> it kind of freaked me out at first I'm like <laughs> Carbo, carbo. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I'm like in a trance, basically. Yeah. Like I will like if Tanner does just, just learn to be like, just go back to sleep. And I'm I'm still asleep, but I'll just stop talking and like I'll lay back down and yes. go back to sleep. Yes. Yes. But yeah, there had been times where I would like shoot up in the middle of the night and he said I would just like start like just talking gibberish, like just and he would just be like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you I, need to do. I still talk in my sleep and, and that makes me nervous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're worried you're going to leak some kind of information or something? <laughs> no. Be like, who's this man? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> Tanner says I never make sense and that I, he just always tells me to go back to sleep yeah. now. So he's used to it, but I haven't slept walk. I don't think since, since we at least moved back to Texas, it's been right. a while, but right. Right. yeah, that was a really weird for him. Like the first, literally the first week we lived together, it scared him. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, so quality of sleep is super important. And, you mm. know, we're, we're going to talk about, um, people that the, some of the different problems that people have regarding sleep. So mm-hmm. a common problem is falling asleep. And then the other most common problem is waking up multiple times in the middle. Yeah. Of night, right. So, um, so, so we're going to start off by having the sleep journal, right. And we're going to write down exactly what time we, we get in bed, roughly estimate what time we fell asleep, wake, uh, what time we woke up and then how many times that, that we woke up in the middle of the night. And so mm-hmm. you have a seven day log and you're going to, you're going to look at that and be like, okay, so this is, this is where we start from. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, so let's talk about the people that have problems getting to sleep first. And, and then, so we'll, we'll talk about the, the complications of sleep. And then we're going to talk about why sleep is so important because it's going to help you do everything from obviously have more energy, more clarity of mind, but also lose weight, um, mm-hmm. rebalance your hormones, like all sorts of amazing stuff that people underestimate yeah. that sleep can do. Um, mm-hmm. so going to sleep. So, so many people have problems with going to sleep. And the very first thing that I think about when someone tells me that they have a going to sleep problem, falling asleep is caffeine and stress. Okay. Mm-hmm. So caffeine is uh, like, it's, I mean, it, it's part of our culture. I mean, I, I don't know the stats of how many people drink coffee, but I mean, you know, obviously it's more than just coffee. There's tea, there's g- black tea, green tea, there's chocolate, there's, um, all of these freaking energy drinks. And I'm not going to yes. get on my soapbox about that, but <laughs> if you drink an energy drink, you should stop. Uh, yes. I'm just going to say, cause <laughs> there are very few um, energy drinks that don't have really toxic ingredients in them. Um, but not the point of this episode. So, um, the first thing that I would say is look at your caffeine intake and make sure that you're, you're realizing all of the hidden places that caffeine can get into your system. Um, I, for myself, I like to cut off caffeine after about noon. Mm -hmm. Um, officially speaking, a a lot of the sleep experts say no caffeine after 2 PM, but if you have problems going to sleep, uh, like honestly, 
everyone's different because the way in which you metabolize caffeine is different in everyone. And so there, there are some people that metabolize caffeine so slowly that literally if you drink past your morning cup of, of Joe, it can affect you going to sleep. So, so if, if that's your problem, caffeine is the first, um, potential problem that's, that's causing you having a, an inability to fall asleep. The second one is stress. Now the whole fight or flight response system in our, in our body, we have the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, right? Sympathetic is fight or flight. It's our adrenaline. Like, like if our, our ancestors were being hunted by lions, that was the adrenaline system that basically helped them run away from the lions and save their lives. Right. Sure. Um, the parasympathetic system is the rest and digest, right? And so it's everything that happens when we're not fight or flight, right? And our bodies were meant to actually stay more in the parasympathetic than the sympathetic, right? But the fact is that nowadays in 2018, we live in a fight or flight um, hormonal system, meaning Mm -hmm. that your body can't really decipher if you're being chased by a lion or if your text message just went off. Yes. And I and I know that sounds crazy, but the the hormonal response that you get is the exact same thing. It's your mm-hmm. so you've got these little tiny glands that sit above your kidneys. They're called the adrenal glands. A lot of people have heard of them, but they they create your your stress hormones and literally it's like they spit out adrenaline when you have the stress response. That's your stress response. So Yeah. So if you have, oh man, I, I feel, I feel sorry for people that haven't realized the importance of turning off notifications, Mm -hmm. notifications for Facebook, for Instagram, for Mm -hmm. all your different, you know, WhatsApp, text message, phone, like just right there alone. That's, that's a five different ways that most people are getting notified and their adrenal system is completely overhauled all day. Right. Not to mention just real stress of life. Like yeah. stress of work, stress of relationships, stress of parenting, mm-hmm. stress of everything. So literally finances, finding, Oh yeah. That's a big one. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. So, so str- the stress response is oftentimes, um, what is responsible for keeping people awake as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the one common thing that people do is they watch TV before going to sleep. Um, if you're watching a horror film, guess what? Your, your body is, is in fight or flight because you've got those, those, you know, during the the climax of the movie, your body is pumping out adrenaline. And so that adrenaline, yeah, is, is going to keep you up. Right. So, so those are, those are two areas that you can, um, play with. Now, anytime that I have a, a, a client or a customer that I'm, I'm working with, I don't like to change multiple factors at, at one time. Right. So, yes. so yeah. if, if, if you're a person that has problems falling asleep, don't change everything at once. Start mm-hmm. with, see if it's the caffeine. Cause it might not be, you might be yeah. just fine drinking caffeine up until whatever. Um, I, I would definitely make sure that you realize like if you're drinking sodas, diet sodas, regular sodas, get, get rid of those. But, yeah. um, but there are a lot of benefits to coffee, to tea, to green tea, other, um, natural good sources of chocolate. So those are yeah. all, um, oh, and then there's a couple of like Garana, which is a natural, um, caffeinated, um, plant from the, the S- South America. Um, and I'm trying to think mm-hmm. of other natural caffeine resources, but like caffeine is not bad, but caffeine right. c- can be bad in too much. Too and- much of anything is never good. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, um, a lot, like I talked about the, um, energy drinks, mm-hmm. caffeine is, um, we know that it, it's a great stimulant for pre-workout. Um, a lot of the pre-workouts have a, an extremely high amount of caffeine in it that mm-hmm. literally, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young, uh, how fit you are literally can put your heart into an arrhythmia that is not compatible with life. Yeah. I e your heart just beats out of your chest and literally can kill you. And I, I have, I have been the doctor responding to those code blues multiple times, especially when I lived in, in uh, Japan and was taking care of the young airmen who, you know, were Mm -hmm. into lifting weights and and they went to Mm -hmm. GNC and and bought whatever pre-workout and it had a, a ton of caffeine, like literally, you know, it, you have to be cognizant of the amount, right. Do you know, 
do you, so do you, I know that you don't drink coffee, but mm -hmm. do you take caffeine in every day? I drink pre-workout every day. Okay. Okay. So you, you, but you that's have the it. I, I don't drink any coffee, nothing. Like I used to, it's funny because now that I'm thinking about it, as we're talking about it, I know my sleep has improved tremendously since I quit coffee altogether. And that might not be, you know, the, the solution for everybody, but for me, I just quit it cold Turkey. I just stopped. I used to drink like six cups a day. Like I was like oh. a coffee, a haul. I don't even, yeah. I just, oh, I don't think I, I like, knew that. I, yeah, I used to drink like multiple cups a day. Like I always had a cup of coffee in my hand. Like at least I would say anywhere from three to six cup of coffee a day, I would drink that. And then I just stopped cold turkey. Oh, and I have headache. like felt, yeah, it was not good. Not good. <laughs> but I stopped cold turkey and I just never started it again. Like I'll maybe have like a cup here and there, but if I do, it's always decaf. I just, I don't know. It's just not my thing anymore. I just don't uh, love it I like love, I used to. I love the taste of it. I love the habit of it. Not the habit, the, um, the, what's the it's word? It's comforting because it's it warm. And if it's your first thing in the morning, you know, so, but for me now, like a big glass of cold lemon water is like my go-to, like that's what makes me feel so refreshed and like ready to start my day in the morning. Right. So. Right. Well, and that's just for me, that's my personal preference, you know? Right. Right. No, that, that's good. And there's many times, uh, there's a few times that I've actually given up coffee just to see how, how I do without it, but I just love the taste of it. And I love the, <laughs> the morning routine of, of having my, my coffee in the morning. So, mm -hmm. but, but I will let people know that if, if they are trying to cut back on caffeine, mm -hmm. obviously this is a no, you don't have to be a doctor to know this, but, yeah. um, you will have withdrawal headaches. And mm -hmm. the reason why that is, is because caffeine is what we call in, um, the medical world of vape vasoconstrictor. So it constricts the, the blood vessels, right? And so the, the blood vessels get used to this, this constriction. And so when it doesn't get the caffeine, it basically dilates. And so you literally feel that pounding headache. Well, it's, that's because I can think about it. Like yes. how it just pounds. It hurts yes, so because much. <laughs> you're getting, you're getting more blood flow to your brain because yeah. all of a sudden these, these, these vessels that are used to be constricted are dilated and you just have this pounding headache. It does go away. Um, people, everyone's different. There's some yeah. people that literally it takes them a day. I've seen mm -hmm. it take up to a week for some people. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause the, the fact is caffeine is a drug. It's a legal yeah. drug, but it's a yeah. drug nonetheless. <laughs> so, um, so, so those are the two areas that you can work on if you have problems falling asleep. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you have problems waking up in the middle of the night, more than likely it is a hormonal issue. And this is the, the stress system actually can, can cause both, but the stress system of having too much cortisol is actually more so related to people that are waking up in the middle of the night. Can you real quick break down what cortisol is for the listeners? Absolutely. So cortisol is that, hor so our adrenal glands spit out a few mm -hmm. different hormones and cortisol is one of them. And it is, it's essentially, um, it's the, the lay person has heard it be called the, the fat storing hormone. Um, it's not an evil hormone. We need cortisol. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously every hormone in our body is, is there for a reason, but sure. we don't need it to be, um, spitting out of our adrenal glands multiple times a day, every day, all day, every day. Right. Mm. And so, so when people tell me that they have problems waking up multiple times in the middle of the night, the first thing that I think about is their hormones are probably out of balance and we need to figure out why. And obviously there's no one like answer for everyone. Um, oftentimes food is the first place that I will go and look at, um, because the standard American diet is definitely classic for jacking with our hormones mm. and, and not just cortisol, um, our thyroid, our, um, growth hormone, our, our, uh, pretty much all of the hormones that are in our body that are circulating estrogen, um, progesterone. I mean, food, food is powerful. And, and if people don't realize that the food that you're taking in is information that you're giving to your body and all of the hormones in your body, then you're, you're, you're working without a tool that could really change your life. Yeah. So, so if you are a person that's having issues waking up in the middle of the night, the first thing that you need to think about is a hormone um, 
panel, if you will. And this is where like, you know, a lot of my, my clients will go and, and request labs. And if they go to just a traditional doctor, um, a traditional doctor will look at them and be like, why do you need all of these? And this is again, where I like to, to recommend functional medicine doctors because functional mm -hmm. medicine doctors look at you in a holistic way and figure out how to, to realign you without needing prescription medicine. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and we've talked about that on past episodes. Functionalmedicine.org is a great place to find one. Obviously people that are in areas that are small town, it's harder. And, uh, you know, you might have to travel a distance to go find one. And I, yeah. I personally think it's worth it. Yeah. Um, but, but your, if, if you are waking up in the middle of the night, it is most likely the number one um, hormone is most likely cortisol. And that has everything to do with, we need to look at your stress management. Okay. So that you have too much cortisol or yes. not enough cortisol. Yes. Too much you cortisol. Too much. Yes. Okay. Yes. So your, your body has this natural, what we call diurnal pattern of um, releasing hormones. And, and so if you look at a, a, a a graph, you'll see the, the different lines that go up and go down. And, and there's different hormones that are supposed to spike at different times of the day. And, mm. and that's nature. But when we, we add in stress, we add in foods that um, change our hormone profile. When we add in toxins that change it, um, that normal pattern of the different hormones changes. And then of course we get symptoms from that. So mm -hmm. inability to fall asleep, waking up multiple times in the middle of the night, that's that's what happens when the, the hormones are not where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, like for example, I actually have a, um, a kit right now. I'm actually about to do this to just take a look and I'm working with my functional medicine doctor, um, who's also my chiropractor. Um, and, and I'm going to do basically a 24 hour, um, cortisol panel. So I will pee in a cup at multiple times during the day, mm -hmm. I record it. And because obviously your, your cortisol is different levels at different times of the day, and it's supposed to be sure. at a certain level at this time versus this time, whatever. Um, but that's, that's the most accurate way to look at what your adrenal system is doing in regards to cortisol. So, you know, I think I'm, I think there's either five or six times that I have to pee in a cup at significant or specific times of the day. And then I send it into a lab and then I get the results and figure out, okay, are my adrenal glands doing what I'm, they're supposed to or not? Yeah. And, and, you know, if you go to a, a normal doctor, a Western medicine doctor, most likely they're not going to even consider doing that. Mm -hmm. So is it necessary to do that? No, I, I'm, I like to experiment on myself and figure out, you know, the, the geeky side, but mm -hmm. <laughs> most people, well, and most people, I mean, it costs money too. And so most yeah, people it's an can, investment. It's an investment in your health. Absolutely. 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 So, okay. So we, we have addressed sleep issues. Now I want to talk about what sleep can do for you. So what are some of the, the things that automatically come to mind that, you know, benefit you for sleep? Well, one, you have to at some point power down so that you can re-up your energy like you can't go forever. And to my knowledge, isn't that when the body repairs itself is when you're sleeping? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's it? That's all you know about sleep? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> Hit me, doctor. Hit me with okay. the good stuff. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, so yes. Yeah. So for sure that it, essentially, I mean, you know, a great analogy is it's like a battery, a rechargeable battery. Mm -hmm. And you, you have your battery in theory, you wake up with it full and throughout the day, it goes down and down and down. And for you to be able to function at your full uh, capacity, you have to recharge it overnight. Sure. And, um, and not only does it, do you recharge, but, uh, healing happens when you sleep as well. Um, sleep, sleep is, one of the best ways to get your hormones back in balance. Um, mm -hmm. When I have a new client that I'm working with, the very first thing that I ask them about is sleep. And I have seen plenty of clients change just that one element of their daily routine. And that's been the one key that has helped them start losing weight. Yeah. And I know that people are, that are listening are like, wait, what? What? No, I, what it well, you don't hear this because it's free. There's no way to make money off of yeah. telling a person <laughs> to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. And, and what, what you're doing when you actually make sleep a priority is you're telling your body that it, it can function the way it's supposed to. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So, so weight loss, weight loss is one of those things that people don't realize that getting your sleep back in check can happen. Um, mood. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Our mood is, um, who uh, I will be the first person to tell you that I turn into a <laughs> when I am sleep deprived. And, um, I, I, a lot of the listeners know that, um, when, it, when I was in residency, I was working about a hundred hours a week. And if you do that math, there's not a lot of time to sleep in there. Mm-mm. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm generally a happy person, Yeah, but you, you give me some multiple nights in, in, in a row of not sleeping. And I mm-hmm. turn into not a happy person. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget the very first time that I took call. It was as a med student. And, um, <laughs> you get as a med student, you have to get there before your residents. And then the residents have to get there before their attendings, right? So the attendings are the boss. They're the ones that are already certified, you know, board certified, trained, and they are the the main people that make decisions at teaching hospitals, right? Yeah. So as med students, residents already get there really early. So literally as med students, we were getting there 30 minutes to an hour before our residents to round on patients. So we're talking Mm -hmm. 4 a.m., okay? My first time on call, I had the realization of, wait, 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 so I'm going to come in at 4 a.m. today, let's just say Monday, and I'm going to carry this pager and I'm going to like use my brain and take care of people all day today, tonight, and all throughout the morning. And I'm not supposed to leave till noon the next day. And that's what people do in medical school and residency. And they do that every third, every fourth night. And guess what? That is one of the main reasons why so many um, people in the medical field are not healthy. That one thing, mm-hmm. uh, if they could change, would would totally change everything, right? Yeah. Um, but but mood. So sleep can help your hormones, can help your mood, um, can help you lose weight. Um, sleep can also help you, um, I, how do I want to say this function at a higher capacity? Yeah. Um, because brain fog now brain fog is, we actually need to do a whole episode on brain fog because Mm -hmm. there are multiple things that can cause brain fog. But, um, how many, how many times do you go to work or do you start your day and you're just like, you're in the clouds and you don't get anything accomplished and Mm -hmm. how much is lost by just, not being able to think clearly. And, yeah. and it, and it's because that, that restorative recharging of your batteries doesn't happen overnight. Right. Yeah. Um, sleep deprivation has caused, well, I, I think there's a study, there's plenty of studies that look at sleep deprivation, comparing it to driving drunk, mm-hmm. driving under the influence. And I will tell you that, um, it happened twice to me where I fell asleep at a stoplight literally sitting up, driving home post-call. And, um, it's, you know, that's the, the worst of not being clear of mind, but yeah, it sleep is something that people just don't, don't give enough credit how it affects everything in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, so tips that can help make you sleep a little bit better. What, what are some things that, that you think about Well, for me personally, I try to wear blue blocking glasses Mm. in the evenings. If I'm still on my computer or if even I'm watching TV with my husband or on my phone or whatever, I try to wear blue blocking glasses. And when we go to bed at night, I like, I have to sleep in the pitch black and it has to be super cold. Like I basically like have to sleep like a vampire, like (laughs) it has to be super cold and pitch black. And I typically like we my husband and I love watching The Office. We've been rewatching The Office on Netflix. Okay. And so it's like such a bad habit that we'll watch like three or four or five episodes. And it's like, okay, we really need to go to bed. So right. on the nights that we like power that off at least 30 minutes, like before we go to bed, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm like more, I'm just more centered and ready to sleep because my mind's okay. not thinking about like the episode, you know? Right. So just like 30 minutes before bed, like we we're done with all of that. Like don't sleep with the TV on, nothing like that. We just like- power that down, go throughout the house, do what we need to do before we go to bed. And within that time, like, I feel like my brain just kind of gets to like, go, 
Mm. as like, we're getting ready for bed. And then by the time I'm in bed, I'm already relaxed and ready to go to sleep. Perfect. So, so you, you brought up a couple points that I wanted to make sure that listeners know, and then I'll, I'll add to that. So, mm-hmm. um, the, the temperature, let's just start with the temperature, the ideal sleeping temperature in the atmosphere that you sleep in is between 60 to 68 degrees. Mm-hmm. And, um, for a lot of people, that's like, really, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go broke <laughs> running my AC. <laughs> um, but uh, there are a few different ways that you can achieve that. Um, obviously air conditioning is one. Um, mm-hmm. I sleeping in the, the buff, um, because the, the more layers that you have on increases your core temperature. Yeah. Um, there are, um, devices like I, I actually own a chili pad, um, that basically cool your mattress. Um, so it literally, this thing lays on the top of my mattress underneath my sheets and, um, and I can set it for the temperature and I, I have a king size bed. And so I it's, it's dual. So it, it makes it where if the person that you're sharing bed with doesn't want it as cold as you, you can change it. And I'll, I know a lot of uh, women complain that, Oh, my husband's a, a heat, a, you know, a yeah. stand in heater. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, so that, that would be a classic example of you can turn his on low and you can turn mine on 65. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but the body temperature, temperature is super important. Um, one, one thing, uh, that you can do, like if, if you find yourself waking up cold in the middle of the night, you can sleep with socks on because okay. that's, that's the first place. If you keep those warm, but your core is cool, you're mm-hmm. still going to sleep well. Um, or you can be like me and be really mean and put your cold feet on your husband's oh, back <laughs> yes, every night, best. every night. I like wedge my feet in between like his shins no way it's so warm and he always is like no 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 he like braces himself because Brace, he knows he i'm knows. gonna do it because he's so warm he's so yeah. much warmer than that like even during the day he'll like come and give me a kiss and I'm like your nose is so cold or your hands are so cold i'm like i know, I know like, a heat seeking missile i need to right? find you so that i can be warm <laughs> Yeah. A few of your Insta stories with you having the heater at your feet. I'm like, Oh Lord. Yes. I, I, <laughs> I'm I, forever cold. I'm always cold. Like always. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, well, being cold at night is good. That helps yeah. with sleep for yeah. sure. Um, you said you mentioned the pitch black dark. Mm-hmm. So, um, a lot of people don't realize that, um, it's not just through your eyes, but your skin actually has receptors that pick up on light as well. So I mean, that would make sense when you say that. I just never thought about that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, so literally making your, your sleeping, um, room, you know, your bedroom, like a cave is Mm -hmm. it biologically the way it's supposed to be. I mean, Mm -hmm. before electricity was around, literally it was candlelight. And so I try about 30 minutes to an hour before I know I'm going to be going to bed. Um, I will try and I, I don't, I power down my devices and that's probably the biggest pointer that we can, Mm -hmm. because I mean, 2018, everyone is on their devices Mm -hmm. all day long, all day, every day, Mm -hmm. uh, or watching TV or watching your computer or whatever. And you are sending signals through your optic nerve, through your eyeball to your pineal gland that basically shuts down the production of melatonin. So melatonin is, um, is a hormone that a lot of people are kind of familiar with because a mm-hmm. lot oftentimes they'll take supplements that yeah. are melatonin. Yeah. Um, but what, what people don't realize is that melatonin is, is actually produced in two different places. It's, it's produced in your, in your brain and in, in that gland called the pineal gland. It's also produced in your gut and, um, gut health. And obviously that's not the topic of this particular episode. We, we will do a topic on gut health alone, but, um, melatonin, um, production is definitely dependent on your gut health, whether it is good or bad. So, um, so regulating those, those natural processes is, is something that you can do by, making your, your sleep atmosphere completely dark. Um, Mm -hmm. the, the blue blocking glasses are something that uh, you feel like a complete dork when you wear them. Like I feel like the biggest nerd. Cause I don't, I mean, you can buy like nicer ones that are like more fashionable looking, but like they do the same thing. I only Uh wear them at home. So mine are like $25 off Amazon. Like they, yeah. 
And so they're so big and chunky and so nerdy, but I don't care. Like Tanner always teases me and I'm like, you know what? I can't hear you because I'm about to go to sleep and have the best <laughs> night's sleep of my life because of my dorky glasses. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so that's, you know, that is a, a little, what we call a biohack that you can, mm -hmm. you know, that way you're able to watch your TV, um, but not have such a, a suppression of the melatonin that's produced in your, yeah. in your pineal gland from mm -hmm. the signals from your optic nerve, which is mm -hmm. the, the nerve that your eyeball is innervated by. Because you're receiving a different hue of light, correct? Exactly. Correct. Correct. It's, it's a different wavelength of light. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, um, blue blocking <laughs> that just, you're too young to remember it, but there was a, a, a time where there was a, an infomercial for the blue blocker um, they were called blue blockers and it, it was all old folks on the commercial and, you know, they, they were trying to, to, to make it look, you know, all stylish and, and fashionable for these old folks that want blue blockers. So, and that's what I think about when I put on my blue blockers, <laughs> I, I think I paid like $12 for mine on Amazon. Yeah. But, they're like super cheap. Yeah. But they do the job. So, okay. So temperature, um, lighting. And then for me, the bedroom is, is meant for the two S's alone. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not here to judge people that watch TV in bed, but, um, yeah. sleep and sex, that's what the bedroom is supposed to be for. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you can, I know a lot of people, TV interrupts both of those really important functions of life. Totally. Um, and so there's some that's people that, point. yeah, that literally, get their TV out of their room because it has affected one or both. Yeah. And, and both functions are very important for you being the most fits and healthy version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Just going to play. <laughs> um, so that would be another point. Um, sex before bed is actually, um, there, there have been studies that have shown that, um, couples that orgasm together before bed, um, sleep better. I believe that. <laughs> I mean, it, it's biology, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And you uh, get a better night's sleep when you're super tired. So uh -huh. just put that good, out there. <laughs> get a good amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so an, another thing that you can do is supplementation. And supplementation can be through um, pill form, can be drink, bath, or um, transdermal, so by lotions or sprays, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so magnesium is a natural relaxant. Um, the absorption rate through the gut is not the greatest with magnesium, and if you take too much of it, it can cause what what Dave Asprey calls disaster pants. Can can yeah, can basically <laughs> make you go to the. No, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> Just know that it is not good. So it's what it sounds like. It then. is exactly okay. what it sounds don't like. Don't want no d mm -hmm. disaster pants. No, you do not want disaster <laughs> pants. I'm just saying. <laughs> Again, um, too much of anything I, is never good. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But magnesium is known to be a natural relaxant. In fact, we huh. use it um, in, in pregos that we want to relax their uterus um, from, you know, hyper contraction. Like they will be on a mag drip in the, the OB unit. Um, mm -hmm. so magnesium is one of those things that, um, can naturally relax you. Um, like I said, oral absorption is not the greatest. So a, a transdermal is actually the best. So Epsom salt bath. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize why Epsom salt baths are so good is because it's, you're bathing in a bath of magnesium. And, mm -hmm. um, and so if you can do a hot Epsom salt bath about an hour or two before bedtime, um, that like sets you up for a, a beautiful night's sleep because by the time, um, sleep rolls around one to two hours later, your core temperature has, has cooled back down, but th you've absorbed all of this magnesium and you're nice and relaxed and your mental state is happy and, and whatnot. Um, another great way, um, is magnesium lotions or magnesium sprays because your, your skin is our largest organ in the body. Yeah. And, and that's actually the and Epsom salt bath is how you're getting, you know, you're getting it transdermally as well. But sure. another way is by magnesium lotions or magnesium sprays. So, hmm. so those are all, um, supplements that you can take. Mm -hmm. Um, I, one of my favorite things 
uh, is the sleepy time tea. That's uh, it's a caramel flavor. Mm-hmm. I, in the show notes, we'll, we'll put the brand, but I love this brand. It's organic, um, non-GMO, all that kind of good stuff. And it tastes really good. And so uh, chamomile tea is another thing that a lot of people use. Yeah. Um, and then I'm trying to think, are there any other, Oh, I already said melatonin. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. So let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about sleep pills, sleeping pills. Mm. Um, because this is, in my opinion, it's an epidemic. Yeah. And I can speak from personal experience because I was, well, let's just be honest. I was addicted to Ambien and it was a small mm. amount and this is how I justified it in my head. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are addicted to a pill, a prescription pill to, to help their sleep. Or even NyQuil. Yeah. Yep. And even though its purpose is for cold and flu symptoms, uh-huh. I remember in high school, my friend telling me that her mom took her NyQuil away from her because she would take it every single oh, night. So, cause hell. she would like, cause it would make her sleep <clears throat> so good. And her mom yeah. was like, you need to stop. You're like yeah. a cough syrup addict. Right. So no, that's, that, it's not good. And, yeah. and, and, you know, and oftentimes people will drink alcohol before yeah. they go to bed. And, and I just want to remind, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to remind everyone that, um, the, it may on the surface appear that you're getting more sleep, but your quality of sleep is actually Mm. suffering. And -hmm. the quality of sleep is the most important thing. And so our, our sleep cycle, um, we, we go through different stages of sleep and each sleep cycle is about 90 minutes. And you want to go through that sleep cycle anywhere between four to six times. So if you're just getting four sleep cycles, you're at least sleeping six hours a night. And there's no, I've, I've read so many different places. There's no magic number as to you need this many hours of sleep because yeah. everyone is different, different, yeah. but you do need complete sleep cycles and, mm-hmm. um, and you waking up in the middle of a sleep cycle can cause you, even if it, let's say it's your sixth sleep cycle. So you, you, mm-hmm. and that would be a nine hours of, of sleep, right? Um, if you are woken up in the middle of that sixth, you're going to basically feel like crap throughout the day mm-hmm. when you're woke, you're, awoke, awaken, awoken, awaken, <laughs> bad grammar. Apparently I need more coffee. Um, when, you, when you're awakened during a, that sleep cycle. So, yeah. so for people that uh, want to, you know, get down and dirty, figure out, okay, I, I want to try and get through, let's say four tonight. Right. Mm-hmm. And so each one is 90 minutes, um, map that out and try and go to bed before 10 o'clock. Now, why do I say 10 o'clock? Because 10 o'clock is the kind of the witching hour because a lot of people will say, Oh, I got a second, you know, a, a second whim, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, and, and I can't go back to sleep. Well, that, that is why getting to bed and getting to sleep before 10 o'clock, because usually that second whim comes around about 11 PM and all of a sudden you can't go to sleep and that's, that's natural. So that's why getting to bed and getting asleep before 10 o'clock is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting those, those sleep cycles in is really important as well. And the quality of them, you, you go ahead. What about people that are tired all the time, but get an adequate, adequate amount of sleep? So most likely their quality of sleep is poor okay. and, and, you know, there are actually physicians that are sleep specialists. Um, so that leads to one topic that I wanted to cover before we, we finish this episode, but, Mm -hmm. um, there are medical conditions that cause people to not get good quality of sleep. And, um, it, it, it's called OSA obstructive sleep apnea. Oftentimes people just say I have sleep apnea. Um, Mm -hmm. but this is a condition that more times than not, um, has to do with excess weight. I have had patients that are sleep apnea, um, patients that are thin and it's just the way that they were made their anatomy of their face, their, the alignment between their, their nasal cavity, their oral Mm -hmm. cavity and their neck. Like Mm -hmm. I'll never forget when I was, um, first starting to practice anesthesia. So one of, one of our biggest emergencies as an anesthesiologist is to the inability to secure an airway. So all that means is if I have a patient that is actively trying to die on me, I need to get a breathing tube 
down this guy's windpipe so that I can get oxygen to the lungs because whatever is happening to this person, they can't do it for themselves. Right. Yeah. So getting that breathing tube down, people can, you know, especially depending on trauma and whatnot can be the difference between life or death. Yeah. Now, when we put a patient to sleep in anesthesia, and if you guys didn't listen to that episode, it's a really special episode because this is the episode that Symphony passed out on us. I did not pass out. I almost. But it sounds, it sounds so much better if we just say you passed out. Dramatic. <laughs> Dramatic. <laughs> the, the episode is going down under, um, and, and it talks about go, uh, going under anesthesia. So, so that is a controlled situation where I get, I will give a patient drugs and they are unconscious and have no, don't have their natural reflexes, like their gag mm -hmm. reflex and, and whatnot. And I put that breathing tube down their mouth through their windpipe so that I can deliver oxygen and anesthetic gases to them. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I have a person that has certain anatomy, I can tell that I'm going to have a difficult time putting that down, even in controlled circumstances. So when I have a person that has no neck, that looks like this from the side that has what we call the TM distance. So the temp temporomandibular distance, basically mm -hmm. how many fingers can I place between the neck and like your airway would be so easy. Like I could probably put a, a breathing tube and you blindfold it because you've got, <laughs> you've got many more than two finger uh, widths. So, so if a person ba basically has no chin, they're more than likely going to be difficult to get an airway in. Hmm. When a person has excess weight and has all of this extra tissue around their neck, when I put them to sleep, it relaxes and it collapses and it makes it hard for um, the breathing tube to get in. So that's what happens with a person that has sleep apnea. So if, if a person has sleep apnea and they're overweight more times than not with weight loss, the sleep apnea will go away. Mm -hmm. But um, in the meantime, they have to wear these terrible masks that are basically sleep apnea mask and it mm -hmm. gives positive pressure so that once the patient relaxes those that airway doesn't relax on it because mm -hmm. that person is not getting good quality sleep because they're falling asleep they're getting so relaxed it's collapsing their airway and they're waking back up so that 90 yeah. minute sleep cycle that takes you through the deep stages of sleep never happens because you keep getting woken up mm -hmm. so you you go to a sleep doctor that does a sleep study and you'll have people that have multiple what we call apneic episodes. Apnea is just basically cessation of, of breathing. You, you stop mm -hmm. breathing. And uh, no wonder you're walking around like you feel like a zombie and you're overweight and you have, you know, you're basically you're sucking at life because you're not getting sleep. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so the, those are, those are all of the different things that you can do to help. And I'm sure we've, we've forgotten a few, but I, we've covered a lot. And, and I, yeah. this episode is, is we like to keep the episodes less than an hour. Um, obviously this is something that we could talk about a ton. Um, mm -hmm. and I will definitely refer again to Sean Stevenson's book, sleep smarter, because I yeah. mean, he, he has 20, I believe 21 different tips on how to sleep smarter. Mm -hmm. And, and we've covered a lot of them for sure. But, um, but sleep is something that, like I said, when I have a new customer, that is the first thing that I will address because mm -hmm. it can be the, the game changer and without changing nutrition, without changing anything. Obviously, I don't want you to eat crap and eat the standard American diet, but more times. But I, than, got, uh, but I got sleep. Right. More exactly. instead if I sleep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Baby yeah. steps. Baby steps. So, so are there any things that, that you, uh, questions or, or additional thoughts that you want to add to the mix before we wrap this up. What are your thoughts about taking naps during the day? I I'm actually a proponent of them and there's, there's really? actually, yeah, there's actually uh, been a, a decent amount of studies that have looked at um, the benefits of napping, but short naps. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where a lot of people don't have enough self-control. Um, so when I, I very rarely, I'll take a nap probably, once or twice a month. And it's usually around that time of the month for, for us ladies. Um, mm -hmm. and, but I will literally set an alarm and sleep no longer than 20 minutes. Yeah. So, so there's definitely benefit of power nap. Um, obviously if you take it too late in the day, it can affect you, your ability to go to sleep at night. Yeah. And I'm, I'm classic, like I, 
I didn't need to be a doctor to know that because if I, you know, fell asleep on a drive home or fell asleep in a movie, like it, it doesn't matter if I was asleep for five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, it would affect my sleep going, going to bed yeah, that night, but, but power naps in the middle of the day, actually there's, there's benefit hmm. to it. And if you're at a place that you can do it, there's, there's benefit for it. Interesting. Yeah. Do you take naps? <laughs> no, I can't because I'm the person that if I take a nap and lay down and my 20 minute alarm goes off, I'll be like, no, but I'm comfortable. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so that's why I make my bed every morning. That's except smart. For this morning. Yeah. So that I don't crawl back into it. <laughs> it's We're- just funny because the one time that Lauren and I talk about sleep, she's been struggling to get more sleep and I didn't make my bed this morning. Mm-hmm. So we are learning along with you guys. We are. We are. <laughs> Always. And, 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 you know, we'll always be 1000 with you guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> this, this is the, you know, not 100, not 1000, 1000. I like that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, Robert just actually made a good point in our ears that, um, Japanese companies encourage their employees to, to sleep. They have like nap during houses. They do. They do. Uh, and I've actually awesome. seen them myself at myself, 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 at, me at and all some, myself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, right. <laughs> but it is true. And and you know, the, the Japanese are they're they're yeah. They know what they're talking about. And mm-hmm. and um and it's I, I think I wish that more more American companies would take on that because I think out of all of the the cultures in the world, the Americans are the worst at not resting, not um uh, appreciating how important um just lifestyle is and yeah. and you know it's well again because it's glorified to hustle like if you're not up late yep. grinding on whatever you're trying to do then you're not like you don't work hard enough it's like no you just if you are working consistently and working smarter not harder exactly. <laughs> yeah. hustlers know the value of sleep <laughs> yep every day I'm hustling hustling yep mm-hmm. so and then and when I lived in Spain for that six months in college um mm-hmm. everything shuts down for hours in the afternoon because people yeah. have long lunches. They enjoy time with their loved ones, their friends, mm-hmm. their family, and then they go take a nap and then they go back to work. And yeah, they definitely live longer than us. I will say that <laughs> for sure. For sure. Okay. Any other tidbits that you want to add to, or any questions before we wrap nope. this up? Excellent. Well, we, everything that we talk about here is to help empower people, the, the listeners to literally live a, a life that's more fits and healthy. And hopefully, um, you've, you've taken some nuggets away from this episode because Cynthia, you are a good person and you deserve good things to happen to you and good sleep. Amen. And good sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Please go take uh, some time and leave a review for us and go follow us on social media. There's all sorts of good stuff that you're missing out if you're not following us on social media. So Mm -hmm. we'll see you guys there and we'll see you for next episode. Bye. Make sure that you find us on social media. You can find Synthony on Instagram and Facebook at Synthony. So that's C-I-N-T-H-A-N-I-E. And on Snapchat at Synthony P. And find me on social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all at Club Fitz Fitness. Remember, that's F-I-T-Z Fitness. And on Snapchat, just at Club Fitz. I appreciate your time listening so much. If you enjoyed this episode of the Fits and Healthy Podcast, can you please go do me a favor and go subscribe at whatever platform that it is that you listen to podcasts. Leave a review. We read every single review and we appreciate the time that you take to leave your thoughts and opinions. Now, also remember, while I am a medical doctor, the information I provide here is not intended to provide medical advice or a professional doctor diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or to any other individual. I am providing general information for educational and informational purposes only, and it is not a substitute for medical or professional care. You should not use this information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other healthcare provider. The information I share is not intended to treat, cure, or diagnose any disease or medical condition. If you believe you have a medical emergency, just call 911 immediately or your physician. Now, enough of that medical legal jargon. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I appreciate your time. Now go live a fits and healthy life.